So this video is going to be about sampling units. Um, as far as the actual methods of sampling, that's a very broad topic that I'm hoping to bring up in another video. Uh, but for this one, I'm just uh, kind of setting the stage for what sampling is and why we sample and just kind of giving an overview of what a sampling unit can be. Um, so basically, uh, if our goal is to find the prevalence of disease in a population, uh, this is an example where we have our population here, 15 people and three are disease positive. Um, that gives us a prevalence of three over 15, so or 20%. Um, this is a simple example where our population is just 15 people, but there can be more extreme examples like millions of people where it's not feasible to talk to everyone and figure out whether they have the disease. Um, so what we typically do is take a, a random sample. There's other ways of doing it, but the simplest example is just randomly picking five of the population of 15. And this is a situation where we got lucky, where the prevalence in our sample here is one in five, which is still um, 20%, but it's totally possible we could have gotten less lucky. And here um, there's kind of an overestimation of the disease in that population. Um, so here, uh, our sampling unit is the individual. Um, there's more extreme examples where um, we have our entire world here, and our sampling unit could be individuals among all of them. It could also be uh, our, our individual sampling unit could be continents, where if we were to sample, we could get North America. And here, if we were to even sample within the three countries in North America, we could get Canada. And even more specifically, we could get Ontario if we sampled within that. And here's where things get interesting, where I'm I'm trying to describe like a sweet spot here of what a valuable sampling unit is, where it's specific enough that the you can you can it's feasible, but it's not so specific that you kind of um, get lost in the weeds. So here we have Ontario, and if you're not familiar, this is kind of like the metropolitan area of Ontario where the population is super dense and pretty fundamentally different from this part of Ontario. This is the very rural part where we might want to draw a circle around this part. And something that's interesting to note here is uh, part of this is, is also America and that might be much more similar to Toronto than Toronto is to this other parts of these other parts of Ontario. So as far as defining the population that you want to sample within, if your if your interest in, is um, prevalence in Ontario, you would sample within Ontario. But if it's more like metro metropolitan areas in the like eastern uh, I don't know Canadian and American cities, this might be a better uh, better circle to draw. Um, next, even within a population of something like Toronto, if we're trying to estimate the uh, prevalence. Basically, we could, um, yeah, we, we could make our question as specific as possible. So like, this is an example of like, what, what is the prevalence of mothers having their second child in the, in the GTA? We can make that even more specific saying between what years or, or what age the mother is or what race we can come to very specific questions, uh, such as what's the prevalence of white mothers between 20 and 30 having their second child in the GTA between 2002 and 2004. The more specific you make it, the smaller um, your uh, smaller your demographic becomes that you're sampling from. And the more likely this will be representative of this very specific population and less likely it's gonna be representative of um, a larger population. If we were to say, what's the um, prevalence of lung cancer in this demographic. It's probably very different than if we were to say all of Toronto. So it can get even more specific where even one individual can be subdivided into um, many units. So one way that can be done is looking at one person at multiple times, measuring their uh, blood at multiple times. And, and if this is uh, something like if we're trying to attribute like a heart attack to a specific event, we might be able to uh, it's like measure various things they're exposed to at one time, another time, and a heart attack will have happened. And we're able to kind of attribute uh, some, some degree of causality here. Another way is to split a person geographically. So each organ can be thought of as a, a sample of all the body. And even within an organ, 
each cell is a sample of that organ. If we were to take a biopsy of the liver, um, that person might have whatever disorder we're looking for, but the group of cells that we end up taking are a sample of this population of cells.